Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. You know, I recently did a video on crankbait retrieves and I got really good feedback on it. And a lot of people asking me to do a similar video regarding retrieves for a different bait. And one of the most common baits people asked me to do a video on was a jig. And a jig is one of those baits that I think oftentimes people just think you throw out and drag in. And I really feel strongly that if you do that, you're really missing out on a ton of extra bites. So I think there's a lot of things we can do with a jig. I've got three main retrieves that I use when I'm jig fishing uh, that I wanna share with you. And I think you'll see that they're a little bit different. They're not necessarily as simple as just straight dragging back to the boat. And if you try these retrieves, I can assure you, you're gonna catch a few extra fish and a lot of big fish because the jig, as we all know, is a great bait to generate a big strike. So we're gonna go down to the water. I'm gonna show you these three retrieves. Before I get into that though, guys, I do wanna remind you that if you're looking for a little bit of help on your local lakes, check out the lake breakdowns that I do with fishthemoment.com. Uh, 40 waypoints based on the season for those lakes. It's basically me doing my lake map research for an upcoming tournament and marking all the juicy spots for you. It's a great way to get you pointed in the right direction on those lakes. So check those out, link is in the description. All right, let's go down to the water. All right, we've got our Dirty Jigs Luke Clawson compact pitching jig with a three inch Berkeley Pit Boss. One of my absolute favorite jig combos. This is the Alabama Craw. So a lot of times people would throw their jig out. They let it go to the bottom. And then what they do is they just slow pull it back, reel it up, slow pull it back. And you will generate strikes that way. But to me, that's not the ideal presentation. Yes, you're kind of just weeding it through, but because your rod tips up, that's gonna keep your bait up above the, the, the structure that you're fishing a little bit. In some instances, that's what you need. If you're fishing through, say, a brush pile, you're better off keeping your rod tip high in the air so that you can bring your jig through the brush pile and, and whatever structure it is that you're fishing. But if you're just casting out and say, if you're fishing uh, some grass that might be you know short off the bottom, or in this case, you're fishing some rock, I think you're way better off to throw it out, let it hit the bottom, and just do a slow drag with the rod tip, keeping your rod tip down. So I've hit a rock there, and then I'll see if I can pop it free. I just popped it free, and you can see my rod tip is just popping through the rocks. But the key here is I almost want my bait to get stuck on that rock. I'm not looking to get stuck where I can't get my bait back, but if I can get my bait stuck in the rock to the point where when it pops free, it actually explodes forward a little bit, that's where I'm gonna generate a lot of strikes. You know, those fish are down in those rock crevices, so you wanna get your bait down in there. If I keep my rod tip up, I'm actually keeping my bait fluttering over the tops of the rocks. I actually wanna get my bait down in there. Now, you're probably gonna get stuck more doing this, but you're gonna generate more strikes because you're getting down to, ooh, I just had a bite. You're getting down to where the fish are. So you let it go down, and you're just slow retrieving it. But you're really trying to feather your bait through the rocks to get it to like hang up on that little rock so that you can see it's hung up. You want it to pop free just a little bit. And that pop free is what's gonna generate the strike. So that's one of my favorite ways to fish it. You know, that's not a big difference between keeping your rod tip up, but it's enough of a difference that it's gonna add up to few extra bites throughout the day. So that's one way I like to fish it. Another way is to throw it out and I do keep my rod tip up, but I do not just feather my bait nice and slow. You let it go to the bottom and I do short little pops, short little pops. And again, you're going for that same, you know, triggering motion. You want your bait to hit the bottom and explode off the bottom. So it's not a stroke, it's just a short pop. I'm probably raising my rod tip a foot and a half, maybe two feet. I'm getting my bait to pop six, six inches to a foot off the bottom and settle back down. That's all I'm doing, but I am not slow pulling it over the tops. I wanna create an explosion. So it's pretty simple, but it's again, a minor change that will result in more bites. Throw it out, let it hit the bottom and just give a short pop. 
don't drag it. You want to actually create a little snap with your wrist. You can see I'm just giving a nice snap with my wrist. It's just enough to get that bait to jump off the bottom, jump off the bottom. And that creates like a crayfish or a bait fish trying to, you know, scurry out of the way because it was spooked or it saw the bass. That's what triggers the bass to come, you know, actually bite it. If you've got a slow moving bait, a lot of times you'll see in underwater footage, something that's slow that the bass feels like isn't gonna get away, they study. They will get down and look at that bait. If it's something that tries to escape, that's when the fish bite it because they don't want it to get away. So that's the second retrieve. The third one, and I've done videos on this and I will link it at the end of this, is an actual stroke. This is where you're gonna slack line, snap the rod hard, and get your bait to jump four feet off the bottom. So you throw it to the bottom. You can see I got a loop of line there and I'll literally take my right hand in this case, grab the butt of my rod and on slack line, I'm gonna get my line to go whoosh, whoosh, cause I wanna again, get that explosion off of the bottom that creates my bait just to jump real far. So I'm just gonna keep snapping it like that. I'm actually going from where I reel down and I'm almost pointing at the bait with a little bit of slack line. And I snap it up to you know the noon or one o'clock position, depending on how high I wanna do it. It's a great way to trigger suspended fish that aren't on the bottom. So if they're sitting three, four feet off, you're getting your bait to hop up up to where the fish are at. And it's just another really good way to create that explosion. Uh, I love doing this if I'm fishing some grass. You know, I might be out in 15, 20 foot of water snapping it through grass. I'm trying to get it to rip through the grass and that's what triggers the strikes. So I let it fall to the bottom. I got a little bit of a bow in my line and I'm actually snapping it. I want to hear my line go shh, shh. If I don't hear that, I'm not snapping it hard enough. So it's again, another way to fish a jig that is not just entailing me slow retrieving it because a lot of times it's all about that reaction i can't stress that enough i say that all the time guys but one of the biggest differences between the average angler and the top level anglers is they know how to create those reaction strikes if you watch some of the best jig fishermen out there they're never just slow dragging it unless they're keeping it down and they really want to get that bait down like i was saying but even when i was doing that the key is to try to get the bait in the cover to get it to snap and release out of one of those rocks. So guys, I hope this was helpful. Don't be afraid of the jigs. A lot of people out there think that the jigs is an intimidating bait, does not need to be that way. Uh, grab yourself some of these Luke Clawson compact pitching jigs, three inch Berkeley Pit Boss, and you can't go wrong. You will catch fish and have a shot at catching some really big ones. So if you enjoyed the video guys, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, stay tuned for another video coming out tomorrow. I'm gonna try to catch that one. Oh. He cracked it on the fall.